In the name of love, a penniless man resorts to photocopying banknotes just to appear financially stable and be closer to the woman he loves. Inside a cramped apartment in Porto Alegre, Andre lives with his mother who likes to spend her nights watching telenovelas. His father left when he was a child, which contributed to their poor state of living. To pay for half of their rent, Andre works as a photocopier operator at Mr. Gomide's variety store. Andre dislikes his nonchalant boss and even nicknames him as Mr. Blob. The only person he likes is his alluring co-worker named Marines. Admittedly, her beauty captivates him, causing him to fantasize about her before. However, Andre's infatuation with her ends immediately when he realizes she is out of his league. Moreover, Marines claims she has a rich German boyfriend whom she proudly introduces to him. Speaking of relationships, Andre experiences difficulty in the dating scene. Most girls who learn about his job tend to reject him as they think it's pretty easy. After his shift, Andre stays in his room illustrating an original comic book. Though undeniably talented, publishers rejected his proposal when he tried to submit it. This postpones Andre's dream of becoming rich, so he's stuck with his minimum wage job. Whenever he's not drawing, he spends his night using his binoculars to observe his neighbors, particularly Sylvia, the girl he currently fancies. Because of his snooping, Andre learns Sylvia goes to night classes and lives with her father, Antunes. Moreover, he's memorized her room based on the angles of her wardrobe's mirror. One night, while Andre intently peeps through Sylvia's window, he's able to get a glimpse of her in undergarment. Even if it only lasted for two seconds, Andre feels triumphant. The following morning, Andre decides to tail on Sylvia to find out where she works. He rides the same bus as her, pretending to have the same stop. To make it appear that it's a mere coincidence, Andre quickly goes to the front and becomes the first to exit. Andre quickly enters Sylvia's workplace and browses through the items, hoping to find her. At that moment, Sylvia suddenly appears and offers to help him find a garment for his loved one. She asks him if the gift will be for his girlfriend, but he denies it. In reality, he doesn't plan to buy anything. Thing. But since Sylvia's presence pressures him, Andre answers that the present will be for his mother. Sylvia recommends a robe that costs $38, but Andre's mind is elsewhere. Instead of accepting it, he asks for her name, and she supplies it to him. When his reasoning returns, Andre quickly refuses to buy the robe because he can't afford it. He doesn't want Sylvia to know this, so he reasons that he'll return sometime. One night, Marines introduces her friend Cardozo to Andre. Once the introductions are exchanged, Marines excuses herself to get some drinks. Cardozo asks for Andre's occupation occupation, and he answers that he's a photocopier operator. This time, Andre asks him the same question, and Cardozo shares that he works with antiques. Moving on with their topic, Cardozo asks Andre if he's linked romantically with Marines, but he denies it. In curiosity, Andre wants to know about the real score between them. Cardozo explains that he finds Marines attractive but has to play hard to get with a girl like her. Before he can further elaborate, Marines returns to their table, carrying a bottle of liquor. After taking a sip, Cardozo executes his playing hard to get tactic by pretending he received a phone call from his non-existent girlfriend. While he's away, Andre tells Marines he finds Cardozo cool. Contrary to his opinion, she thinks he's a tryhard and even makes fun of his attire. After that, Marines pulls Andre to the dance floor, and the pair grooves to the tunes. Cardozo notices them and plans to join. However, he never gets the chance to dance with them as Marines treats him like an errand boy. After the party, Andre coincidentally rides on the same bus as Sylvia and sits in front of her. He repeatedly glances back, pretending that he's recognized her. Then, Andre starts conversing with Sylvia, reminding her of his identity. When she returns to her book, Andre promises to visit the store tomorrow and buy the nightgown. Sylvia tells him it's Sunday, so Andre promises to visit on Monday. Still confused, she stresses they were negotiating about the robe before, not the nightgown. Andre acknowledges her correction, so he promises to buy the robe before the weekend if he can't visit on Monday. Now their conversation's finished, Andre feels terrible for lying about purchasing the robe. It's just that Sylvia's tone earlier sounds slightly demeaning. However, this is a new dilemma for him as he has to find a way to acquire $38. Andre thinks Cardozo is rich due to his cell phone and attire at the bar. Therefore, he visits his workplace, hoping to borrow money from him. Inside, Andre discovers that Cardozo isn't running an antique shop, but rather a junk shop. He confronts Cardozo about this, but the man reasons that he's not selling anything novel. Hence, his items are technically antique. Andre clarifies that he thought he was rich, especially since he was flaunting it at the party. In Cardozo's defense, he's simply trying to impress Marines. As a result of his defensiveness, he attacks Andre's occupation, stating that he's merely a Xerox boy. He takes offense to his words, so he chastises Cardozo by saying that at least he's not pretentious enough to wear unsuitable attire to a bar. Silenced by his frankness, Cardozo moves on and asks the reason for his sudden visit. Andre tries to answer, but shame hinders him, so he invites him to coffee instead. Upon entering the cafe, Andre immediately borrows money from Cardozo, 
disappointing him. Curious, Cardozo asks Andre what the purpose of the money is, and the man tells him he wants to buy his mother a robe for her birthday. Since he doesn't have enough to lend, Cardozo offers to sell him an angel figurine for only $10. Andre declines to accept it as he's firm on purchasing the robe. For Cardozo, he believes that mothers prefer angels over robes. Regardless, Andre insists on acquiring $38, but when he starts to sense Cardozo's rising annoyance, he eventually accepts it. Later that day, Andre heads to his workplace, determined to obtain the amount he needs. Suddenly, he notices new equipment delivered to the store and asks Marinas about it. She explains their color photocopiers finally arrived. As Andre familiarizes himself with the equipment, he discovers the new photocopier can crisply replicate photos. Therefore, he conceives a plan to use it to reproduce money. Thankfully, Mr. Gomide gives him a $50 banknote, ordering him to pay a bill for him. Gingerly, Andre takes the money and volunteers to close the store later. He reasons that he wants to assess the machine further. In a span of five hours, Andre is able to photocopy Mr. Gomide's $50 banknote perfectly. The following morning, Andre visits a lottery to make a bet, a way to change his counterfeit bill. He believes the lottery's hurried nature will make it impossible for authorities to prosecute him for using fake bills. Andre distracts the clerk by using his figurine and asking if she knows what kind of angel it is. Thankfully, the woman takes the bait and even asks her co-worker to identify it. According to the woman, the angel is supposed to be Saint Michael because of his armor. Shortly after, Andre successfully acquires his change from the counterfeit banknote, making him feel victorious. Immediately, he heads to Sylvia's workplace and eagerly announces he's ready to purchase the robe. Sylvia gladly assists him and asks which color he wishes to buy. As an indirect flirting, Andre asks for her preference, and Sylvia tells him she likes the violet one. Happily, Andre purchases the said color. Due to their interaction, Andre and Sylvia's relationship begins to develop. One afternoon, Andre meets Sylvia inside a diner, discussing books. In the middle of their conversation, Andre introduces a comic book to her, causing Sylvia to ask for a sample of his illustrations after he lied that he works as an illustrator. He quickly refuses, reasoning that he's yet to finish something worthy. Still, Sylvia is interested in his work, so she requests that he prepare an on-the-spot illustration. Again, he refuses, disappointing her. With her expression, Andre eventually yields and promises to craft something for her. He asks what subject she wishes him to draw, and she tells him to make something nice to look at. When he hears this, Andre immediately thinks of Sylvia. One morning, Andre excitedly shows Sylvia the illustration she asked for. She undeniably appreciates his illustration, but notices it's drawn to her likeness, especially her room's interior. Andre feigns innocence, so she moves on and expresses her gratitude to him. For her, his illustration will serve as her early birthday present. Upon hearing this, Andre extends his birthday wishes to her. The following day, Andre hopes to give Sylvia a proper birthday gift, so he heads to Cardozo's shop. The man shows him an antique grooming kit he claims has existed since 1400. Because of its alleged age, Cardozo charges him $100, which Andre immediately declines. Cardozo tries to bargain it for $60, but Andre remains uninterested. Later in the evening, Andre meets Cardozo in a bar and hands him $50 for the antique kit. He refuses to accept it as he sets $60 as the minimum price. Since Andre remains persistent, Cardozo takes the money to pay for two beers. Andre protests as Cardozo is unaware that the bill is fake. Due to this, Andre visits Cardozo's shop to confess about the event last night. But before he can do it, the man reveals that the grooming kit was never antique and makes fun of Andre for being desperate to purchase it. In reality, it only cost $10. When Cardozo returns his change, Andre admits that the bill is fake. Shortly after his revelation, Cardozo pulls him outside and surprisingly asks if Andre has more counterfeit bills. He points out that it looks real, but Andre disagrees. Andre opines that if he looks at it closely, he'll notice its fakeness. Despite his explanation, Cardozo requests him to make more. Andre refuses because it's difficult to perfect it. Moreover, he doesn't have a genuine $50 on hand, and reproducing a replica doesn't create the best outcome. Cardozo volunteers to provide him with the money as long as he can complete it the following night. Once Andre acquires acquires the money, he proceeds to photocopy it and produce numerous genuine-looking copies. In the evening, Andre takes Cardozo to his room and hands him his output for appraisal. Cardozo is impressed and asks what he will do with his share. Andre reveals he plans to buy Sylvia a present. Curious, Cardozo asks if he'll directly visit her store, but Andre dismisses the idea. He clarifies that he needs to change the counterfeit bills first. The next day, the pair exits the lottery after making their bets. Cardozo asks Andre about his combinations, and he reveals that he picked the one 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sequence. This leads Cardozo to criticize him, opining that his numbers will have a small chance of getting drawn. After the pair successfully change their fake bills, Andre gives Sylvia window blinds for her room, earning her gratitude. 
To return his kindness, Sylvia asks when his birthday is, but he answers that it's already passed. Sylvia insists on giving him a present, so Andre ultimately relents. A week later, Andre observes Sylvia's room and discovers she has finally attached the blinds to her windows. Upon her arrival from school, Andre eagerly stares at her while she disrobes. However, his momentary happiness changes to fury when he discovers that Antunes actually peeps at her while she's bathing. Immediately, Andre confides in Cardozo, and the man advises him not to confront Antunes. He believes that Sylvia will realize that Andre has been observing her if he does so. Therefore, he suggests Andre should marry Sylvia so she can leave Antunes. Yet the downside of this is that Andre needs real money. Speaking of acquiring genuine money, Andre announces that he knows a way. Later that day, Andre devises a plan of robbing the bank's armored vehicle. He creates a map to guide him in his heist and reproduces counterfeit bills to buy a gun. When preparations are all set, Andre lies to Sylvia, telling her he'll leave for work in Rio. Though saddened, Sylvia quickly believes his words and hands him a present. Andre accepts the book and leaves through the pages. There, he reads a few bittersweet excerpts, and Sylvia translates them for him. After reading, Sylvia abruptly tells him she must return to work. Andre stops her and suddenly proposes to her. Sylvia accepts without any hesitation and kisses him. Following this, Andre buys a gun from his delinquent friend Feitoza using a counterfeit bill. Afterward, he meets with Cardozo to discuss how they'll execute their plan. During the heist, Andre easily overwhelms the guards, allowing him to acquire the bank's money. However, a civilian, who happens to be Antunes, unmasks him, leading Andre to shoot his leg. Hurriedly, Andre scurries away from the scene to meet with Cardozo. Unfortunately, their getaway vehicle is unavailable due to a parking ticket, so they take the bus instead. The next day at work, Andre notices a headline in the newspaper about the bank heist yesterday. Thankfully, the perpetrator's police sketch doesn't resemble him, making him feel relieved. He informs Cardozo about the news, as well as Feitoza's arrest. It turns out Feitoza used the fake bills at a nightclub. Suddenly, Andre notices another news, but this time it's a good one. It turns out that Andre's lottery combination was drawn which legally makes him a millionaire. After their brief celebration, Andre worries about how they'll claim the money, especially since it'll surely make the headlines. He can't risk getting recognized as the bank robber if his picture is published. Cardozo acknowledges this and suggests finding someone he trusts enough to be his representative. This time, Marinez enters the picture, and the woman charms her way into successfully claiming the lottery prize. Now swamped with money, the trio decides to spend it on whatever material things they desire. Marinez spends her share on expensive clothes and shoes. Cardozo buys himself a sports car, and Andre buys art materials and and a brand new telescope. Later that day, Andre and Sylvia catch up, and she curiously asks him about his stay in Rio. Andre lies that the city is nice and invites her to stay with him there. Sylvia declines because she's sure Antunes won't allow her. Bravely, Andre tells her he'll talk to him. Meanwhile, Cardozo takes Marinas to a luxurious hotel, where he books its most expensive suite. Once inside, Marinas marvels at the room's entirety, and its grandness excites her. As a result, Marinas finally allows Cardozo to sleep with her. In the evening, Andre takes Sylvia to a fancy restaurant to meet with Antunes. When Antunes sees Andre, he immediately recognizes him as the bank robber, but he remains quiet. Antunes begins to ask Andre personal questions, but Sylvia answers them in his stead. Moments later, while Sylvia's away, Antunes interrogates Andre for what he's done in the bank. He threatens Andre with the possible consequences of his actions. However, he clarifies that he's not interested in snitching. Instead, he asks Andre to give him a portion of his lottery money. After dinner, Feitoza suddenly appears and takes Andre to a car warehouse. He briefly confronts Andre for giving him fake banknotes. When Andre asks him what he wants, he aggressively threatens him and demands Andre to give him the stolen money. Without hesitation, Andre promises to give it tomorrow. Feitoza accepts his deal, but he continuously threatens him before leaving. That night, Andre makes a plan of setting a trap for Feitoza. Afterward, he uses his telescope to check on Sylvia. Surprisingly, she is aware of his actions as she directly stares into him. Then, she uses a note to ask if she can come to his room. Inside Andre's room, Sylvia informs him that Antunes told her he was the bank robber. Despite this information, she is unfazed, but the possibility of Antunes hindering their relationship worries her the most. Andre suggests they give him the portion of his lottery money, but Sylvia objects. Instead, she proposes they end Antunes's life, earning Andre's disapproval. For him, it's wrong to kill the man who brought her to life. Contrary to his perception, Sylvia opines that she doesn't owe Antunes anything, especially since he treats her terribly. Moreover, she believes that he's not her biological father. The next day, Andre meets Feitoza at a bridge to give him the bank money. After Andre hands him a bag, he hurriedly leaves, but Feitoza discovers it contains counterfeit money. As a result, an intense chase ensues between the two. Upon reaching a staircase, Andre takes the lead, so Feitoza thinks of another way to catch up. He drops the bag on the ground and positions
positions himself to jump. Unbeknownst to him, a row of wooden sticks was erected underneath, leading him to get pierced to death just like what Andre had planned. Later that night, Andre lies to his mother, saying that he'll be leaving to attend Marina's wedding. Curious, she asks him when he'll return, and Andre informs her that he'll be back in a few days. Shortly after, his mother goes to bed and wishes him good night. This time, Andre reciprocates it with a smile. The following day, Andre, Silvia, Cardozo, and Marinez meet in an uncrowded pub to plan Antunes's demise. Their plan goes this way. Silvia addresses a letter to Antunes, informing him that she's in Rio. For Andre, he's tasked to send the letter in the post, pretending to be Silvia's friend. Meanwhile, Marinez uses her charm to distract and keep Antunes at the bar. This is necessary for Andre and Cardozo as they need more time to create a makeshift bomb using Antunes's refrigerator and gas tank. Once done, Andre calls for the firefighters and lies that Antunes' apartment has experienced a gas leak. However, Cardozo's forgotten his jacket inside the apartment, which contains the car keys halting their escape. Without a choice, Marinez calls Antunes to distract him. On the other hand, Andre, Cardozo, and Silvia barge inside the apartment, confusing him. Andre introduces Cardozo to him, but Antunes insists on knowing the reason for their visit. Andre informs him they need to unplug his refrigerator, reasoning that it has a problem with its motor. He points out that Cardozo will do it for him, further confusing Antunes. After Cardozo unplugs the refrigerator, the trio hurriedly tries to leave, but Antunes Antunes stops Andre. He asks him when he'll give him the money, and Andre promises he'll have it by tomorrow. Outside the apartment, Sylvia reveals that she's plugged in the refrigerator, signaling that Antunes' demise is imminent. At that moment, Antunes opens his refrigerator, sparking an explosion. The next day, Cardozo reads the newspaper and discovers the coverage of Antunes' death. According to it, the authorities have found the stolen money inside his apartment, deeming him the culprit for the heist. As they're currently in Rio de Janeiro, Andre addresses a letter to his mother, informing her that he's put their rent money in the bank. Moreover, he's ordered her a new TV, which is expected to arrive next week. Additionally, he tells her he's fine but wishes to bring her with him someday. To end his letter, he informs her about Sylvia, his girlfriend. Unbeknownst to him, Sylvia also penned a letter to his mother. She discloses that Andre's mother used to be friends with her mother. Then, Sylvia reveals that she's aware of Andre peeping but she doesn't care about it. Truthfully, she found him cute that she even followed him at work. Due to this, she already knows that he's a photocopier operator. Another revelation is that Sylvia actually planned their chance encounters and was aware that Andre was also following her. After sharing these, Sylvia tells her that she's been meaning to write to her but has never found the courage before. That day, Paolo appears, and Sylvia happily hugs him. She believes he's her biological father as he's her mother's former lover. Then, Sylvia introduces him to her friends, and they proceed to approach the Christ the Redeemer statue. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.